don't do anything yet. Just wait for people to come in. Just talk to each other like normal. Mm-hmm. It's okay. My internet doesn't work again. Start with 67 and welcome to episode 8 of Disrupt Talk. The topic for today is bridging the social divide. Possible or not, we'll see. Definitely not going to get done with this show. However, something is different today. We do not have Kumbo Nakta. Today we have an interview with his family. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Your surname, pronounce it for me. Pesuwana. Pesuwana, right. In English, it's difficult to pronounce. Pesuwana. Pesuana, Pesuan, the Pesuan family. Kun Bo Nakta will be back with us when we are analyzing current affairs. But from time to time, we will do interviews such as this with regular families, ordinary people, activists, so on and so forth, and maybe even politicians if they ever want to talk to us. Now, for today's topic, okay? Thailand is going through a lot of change. We have social divide, we have family divide, we have uh, one side royalist, so-called royalist, the other side nation haters, so-called nation haters, among friends and among families. Now, I have personally talked to this family before. Rosie writes for Disrupt once. The second article will come one of these days. (laughs) Kunsuke is her dad. Win is her older brother, right? You're 20, you're 17, and Kunsukit, you are? E2. So we are of the same generation. Now we're gonna look at how this family function together, protest together, stay stronger together, but at the same time have a lot of disagreement and also go through challenges and obstacles with other members in the families and also social circle who do not say who do not share the same political values. Kunsukit, let me begin with. Right? You are an upper class person, wealth wise. Right? I know you don't like the term, but we have to categorize some way, somehow. So, economically, you are of the upper class, you are well off, you are a business owner, um, you are, your peers are of a certain status. You should be wearing a yellow shirt out there singing praise to the, the General Prayut, the Prime Minister, and the institution. But instead, you find yourself out at Kanak Rasadon protest. Why is that and what sort of backlash have you received from your family members that are not these two and also from your friends? Well, just I would want to qualify that prior to this, I was pretty much uh, neutral and I wanted to go out with, go in there as open-minded as possible. So. Um, but you know, after going to a few protests, I did realize that you know what was being exhibited out there was only partly true. So let's say the three hours that I was there, maybe only a three-minute clip of the violence or the bad mouthing was shown. So I you're, felt that you're, you're that talking was, about the October 16 crackdown. Uh, fourteen. No, Sorry, fourteen. Right? Was that fourteen? Fourteen. Right? Six, 16. 16. 16. If it was at the... Rajapasong. Yeah, Rajapasong. Right, right, right. So, um, I, I, I felt that there was a bit of bias or substantial bias within the government side. And, uh, and I, I felt that, you know, I had to join in this time around. And the key difference why I needed to join in this time around as opposed to the previous ones is the message the children were offering right now was basically a systemic reform, but they uh, reform, which was much, much more different than the previous protests that, let's say, my friends were were hanging about in Mm -hmm. in, in the 
the the Kaba Basal P D R C the Red Shirt U D D. It it you know to this day you know what is the end result? Right. Correct. So basically, you're saying that the difference between the protest today and the protest before is that the protest today is actually tackling the reforms of the system rather than being on behalf of someone else. That's correct because that particular system was pretty much a uh, protest was more a bandaid system, right? A bandaid solu solution to what needs, uh, you know, abrupt surgery, which is what we're talking about right now. So going back to your question again is how how do I interact? With when when your family members, not these two, or your friends, I mean, they must be. Let's just call them royalist. That's the term nowadays. Whether that's accurate or not, we'll discuss later. But how do they look at you? What do they say to you? Are you an outcast? Do not, do you not get invited to golf games anymore? What happened? Well, I think um, the American adage, you know, you shouldn't talk about sex, politics, and religion. I think applies to Thailand as well. So what we've tried, or what I've tried as much as possible, is try to not talk about that at, uh, at all. Because, to, in all fairness. You can't really identify who's a royalist and who's actually a, uh, on your side. To be honest, I mean, in, even among my peers, my suppliers, my employees, or, or whoever you know that I deal with. Um, so, so I just try to avoid the situation uh, as possible and just try to be as neutral as possible uh, at the moment. Uh, neutral at home and at the workplace, but obviously on the one side when you're at the protest. That's now, correct, Rosie. Um, I the. The first time I, I, I saw you guys in a while was your dad and, and you together at, at the protest mm -hmm. in front of Parliament House. Now you yourself, uh, you don't like the word again, but it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Privileged mm -hmm. class, international school, you're going to Stanford? No. <laughs> Which one? I've got. Uh, a school in California. Which one? Um, you don't want to say? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Right, but. But obviously, you're quite privileged, right? Yes. But what made you decide to get out there in the street and join the protest? I think it, you know, it all stems from the trigger point that I had a while back in terms of comparing and contrasting my international background when I was in the States and when I moved back, I noticed the whole corrupted government and how, as well, like Anna might have said, like people were saying BLM and still being um, supportive of the corrupted government by illegal driving or and all that, I've noticed that. I was like, this is something that no country should 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 be legalized or um, should um, or a country should be run by bribery and all that. So when I went out there in the protest, I noticed like what people were facing and like kind of felt to a certain point of what uh, they mean by what their lives have been oppressed by. Maybe like Thai students saying how their education system is very flawed. I've never encountered that, but hearing those points, I take taken back into consider consideration and thought, you know, um, that my I shouldn't be I shouldn't be thinking of what I will lose. I will lose some points, maybe like friends or maybe uh, my you know family and all that, but. What I think is like what I'm looking in thirty years ahead of time. If this keeps on going in a loophole, where are we gonna be? Is the country ever gonna grow, or is it gonna be stagnant like this forever for another how many decades? And then again. Um, now the the when I was at the Banna in the section protest, I was fortunate enough to hear a lot of young students, female mm -hmm. students, high school and university students taking turn going up to the stage and sharing their experience. Mm -hmm. Now. A lot of these young girls, they weren't there to actually talk about democracy and the future. They were there just to talk about their own experience of hardship living under this system. For example, having to wake up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, if not 3 o'clock, just to spend 3 hours commuting to school, whether it's a high school or a university, and how they have to save up, and many of them came from the provinces, no scholarship, nothing. Everybody struggle tooth and nail just to make it day to day. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you are very fortunate. Yes. How do you feel when you see the different that exist in this society? I definitely feel like it's, you know, the fact that International schools, uh, international schools and private schools are growing instead of fixing the public public education system itself. 
just shows how we're running away from problems instead of facing them. That you know, public. Uh, I mean, in terms of finding a great education system that they had, they have to take three hours of the day and wake up to go there. Just shows how you know how people are very. Uh, I guess how privileged I am, definitely. But you know, things like this in terms of. Uh, how do I explain? <laughs> The, the grievances are valid. And yeah. It might not necessarily be uh, what the key leaders are saying, but the grievances for these young children, you know, are applicable. I mean, they, they may sound superficial, but they are part of the problem. You know, if if they're having to wake up, you know, come from the provinces for the best education in Bangkok, then there's truly, you know, uh, reform that is required in the education system. I mean, take for example my children. You know, we, you might, uh, you consider us upper class, but we fight tooth and no, nail and we sacrifice a lot. I sacrifice a lot to send my kid, kids to international school just because of the fact that I know the local system will not allow my children to grow uh, as, as, as real people, as real adults. That can think that's, a, that's an interesting point. We'll get back to that. We'll, we'll, we'll go yeah, to, we'll but, go but, to but, the, but before I go, I, I think I think it's also really important to identify the cause of, of this inequality. Why why uh, we are why particular kids from the provinces are waking up at three a.m. four a.m. Is it is it because of their individual um, uh, decisions or is it because of the government? I think that's a conversation that you should also uh, uh, talk about and have a civil discussion about with a perhaps a uh, mm -hmm. economic expert or sociological expert as well. So I think that's really important. But but um, but yeah, go go to other questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really I'm really passionate about it. I'm really I, passionate I can tell you're passionate about it. We'll talk about like that like on another show. But, <laughs> but <laughs> all right, but but let me just introduce our. Uh, but right. I guess yeah, that this is Win, right? You're, yeah, you're, you're, you're the brother. Now, Win, uh, before before the show, we, we, we got to talk a little bit. This is the first time I met you. Right. Now, you told me just a few weeks ago, you did not care about politics. Two days ago. Two no, days no, ago. Still weeks, still weeks, <laughs> two weeks. Two days. days. You were apathetic about everything. You sure. were the typical, the typical, the yes. high soul, the oh, well, yeah. typical, you know, you're a good looking lad, you got the girls, you go party, you have fun, it's all about Gucci, Versace, Mercedes, so on and so forth. Okay, I'm excited about that. But, two days ago, or two weeks, something flipped. Yeah. What happened? Now you can. What happened? Um, honestly, um, I, I've always cared. I've always cared, and the reason why I was so distant from it is because of well, my family. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, okay then. <laughs> uh, well, it was because of my, uh, my family. And um, uh, whenever I went to ask my parents questions, whatever questions, uh, what's going on, what's that, they would usually respond back, okay, I don't want to talk to you, you go educate yourself, educate yourself first. Okay. So but then, that's, that's what they did, right? But then, pro but then after that, um, they invited me to the protest and I was able to see uh, what was going on. I was pretty much enlightened. And, um, and I just I started to open my eyes, and then my and then and then I think it was also a change in my parents' attitude as well, uh, and my sister's attitude was was that um, maybe maybe we should start talking to him more, mm -hmm. should try to open, and then try to answer his questions instead of just pushing him away, mm -hmm. and then that actually made me to uh, uh, research a bit more about mm -hmm. Thai politics. Um, I'm more of a U.S. politics and global politics kind of person. I, uh, I study economics and I like to see economic trends and how it affects society and whatnot. But, but definitely because of uh, my family's openness. But that's also another trigger point, isn't there? You told me about this earlier. Something happened to one of your friends. Oh yeah. Um, is it okay if I mention this? Of course, name? say yeah. it. Francis. You know, we, we all know. Um, thank God he's out. Uh, he's a friend of a friend, actually. Uh, the one was second. Uh, Fran Francis was one of the two, or now one of the three activists that are uh, arrested because they allegedly block the royal mother kid allegedly yeah in front of in in front of government house. So they are charged with Article One One O. So Francis, one of the three, is actually your friend. Yeah, my friend, friend of a friend, and, and I I saw what he saw what he did, and in my opinion and my my values, I didn't think that he was causing any harm to anybody anybody yeah honestly <laughs> so that was definitely a, a trigger point it was it was a change and also um i, I know you see you know they also banned this i mean they also scraped this uh this, this policy of uh 
the government deciding what is fake and what is not fake news. Um, they 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 stop this. They they scrape this. That, 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 that's, so. that's still the the anti fake news center still exist. Yeah. But but the government is no longer going mm-hmm. trying to shut down news media channels. Yeah. At least for now. So. Yeah. At least for now, and 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 that was also one of the trigger points because huh? I I believe that in order for you to understand the truth and find the truth. Uh, you you need to have all ideas open, all information, everything. We should have a civil dialogue, so that we can scrape out the bad ideas and let the good ideas float to the top. And that is the best form of regulation of uh, fake news. So so from the typical world of Donald Trump, Black Lives Matter, so on and so forth, um, you went to the protest and that was eye opening. Mm-hmm. And something actually very close to you happened, which is a friend of yours. Right. Have become victim, right? right? And also something else you said that is quite interesting. I thought this family was all about open and liberal, but then you said early in your life when you asked questions to your parents, your dad said, "Don't worry about it. Just go get an education." But that's very no, typical no, no, no. of a Thai family, no, 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 and that's why. Okay. Well, maybe that's fake news. Dad, you uh, defend yourself. Oh, we, we, we do have we do have different opinions. We have uh-huh. perspectives. Uh, we argue. We, we're pretty loud, actually. Right. But at the end of the day, we understand how to agree to disagree. Agree, um, uh, you know. At the end of the day, we are family. Um, but you I mean you can explain your side of the story. I, I would love them to be uh, they one on right? Everyone loves uh, they one on some guy is uh, a child who listen and obey. I would love to have that, but you know, for me to raise this kind of child, they will be dependent on me forever. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in a selfish sense, if it's a they one on some guy, eventually. They will, they will. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Oppose you in, in the end. Right. So I wanted them to be as open as possible with mm-hmm. what they're doing all the time. Mm-hmm. So we always interact all the time in whatever they do. You know, hey dad, I want to try to smoke. Okay, go ahead. Hey dad, I want to drink. Okay. So we we try to keep a conversation like that. But is it civil all the time? No. Can't. But I know. It, but but but. But at the very least, they're not hiding anything from right. me. Okay, but here's the point overall. You are you are a dad who went to the protest with your children. Mm-hmm. But you're not the only one. Uh, my, my time at the protest, I've encountered quite a few families. Okay. Moms and dads taking their children to the protest. But to me, this is quite a phenomenon. And we talk about this generation gap, generation divide, generation clash. But at the same time, there is a bonding between certain families and certain generation. Let me ask you this. Why do you feel that it's important to take your children to this protest while other parents will say that is so dangerous, something bad could happen, and something bad did happen on, on, on October 16? Why do you think it's important? Because I want to uh, be able to allow them to see what truly is there. You know, I, I don't want to you know, you know, disparage the, the other parents that don't go, but I, I, I understand their reasons why they're not going. And why did they want their parents to go? Because we've all been through the red and yellow, right? And even at that time, you know, I was a bit hesitant to also go because you have a job, you know, your business or your employer probably have relationships with the government as well. Mm-hmm. So the the families that don't go right now, I, I don't disparage them at all. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, but you, you told me earlier be- before the show that one of the main reasons you take your children to the protest and that you support the protest is that you worry about the future. Yes, why, why do you worry about the future? Because obviously, your future is fine. Their future is fine. You guys are great. So what future are you worrying about? I don't have much to lose compared to what they have to lose. Simple okay, as that. Fair enough. Can right. you elaborate? I'm 52, and I'll repeat again. And the life expectancy is 77, so 25 years. These kids are 17 and 20, and the protests, I've seen kids as young as 13 and 14. So they yes. have a good 60 years ahead of them, okay? So what I see now is, in the past 14 years, where has Thailand gone? From crisis to crisis. But if you look back, the crisis should have May Thailand develop more or understand or learn from the lessons, right? So you just take the best example is Korea. I was in high school in the U.S. in Korea, uh, in the U.S. in 1987, last year, senior year. And at that time, I had a lot of Korean friends. Right. They all 
were uh, moving away from the dictatorship mm -hmm. in Korea. In 1987, that's when the June Dem Democratic Movement happened in Korea. That was 33 years ago. Every day now, the kids love Blackpink, 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 Semekhap. Do they realize how long it took Blackpink to arrive here? 33 years. That's, that's a K-pop band, by the way, in case not everyone knows. Yeah. 33 years, uh -huh. right? And look where they are now. So you just ask the simple question, where will Korea be in 20 years? After 33 years, they progress here. Where will they be in 20 years? And the next question is, where will we be? Where will we be? Okay, that's, where that's, will the kids be? I mean, that's a good point because when, when I first, uh, in, in the 90s, I remember Thailand was talking about how we're going to compete with Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan. <laughs> hey, that we was were, true. We, we <laughs> were the kids laughing at our generation. That was, that was real. That's, I mean, that's that, that was real. Like, we, we, were the that was, that, we were the fifth tiger. We were the fifth tiger. We were the fifth tiger. We were part yes. of, the, the, of the Asian tigers. But, fascinating. But, yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> That was before you were born, right? But, yeah. but nowadays, we're not even going to compare ourselves to those countries. Mm -hmm. We're just worrying about Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, uh -huh. Myanmar getting, catching up to us. But here's the point. You, right now, you're saying that you take your children to protest, you support the movement because you want to fight for the future of your children. My question is, and you might not be able to answer it, mm -hmm. why then do others of your generation, which is we're a similar generation, do not fight for the future of their children. Why is it then that they fight to hold on to the past? Because I think in all fairness, uh, the system that we have, whether or not the yellows come up, whether or not the reds come up, whether or not the greens come up, the people that look like here, like, like you and me here, right. are comfortable regardless. Uh -huh. We will survive. Uh -huh. We will be the, the balai, to be honest a snake and eel that can survive in, in any uh, yeah. type of government. But we represent maybe 5-10% of the whole population, right. maximum. Uh -huh. So it's, is it fair, is it uh, very selfish to just disregard the 90%? Right. Right. So I'm not sure if I can be able to answer your question, but I, when, when you're, you're comfortable in your status quo, you know, driving your nice car, Eating, you know, and, and you know, at, at uh, the nice food court, a very expensive food court here, by the way. I know. Are you comfortable? I'm not happy. We still want to be able to use yeah. this place. <laughs> but you, you can share. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I think the your, I think your question, if I can, I can paraphrase it, is is um, why do we care, right? Because like like I said, like you said, uh, my dad has very uh, less to not that not much to lose. Um, Myself and my sister also have very less, not as much to lose compared to people of lower social economic strata. I think, and I think, I think, I think the reason why we care is because of just how we were raised. I think it was it was the idea of our values. I think uh, when when we have so much already, um, sometimes we have so much and we don't realize that we have this this much. And then we we see other people uh, living at a lower uh, a standard of living. Uh, I think I think it develops that kind of empathy. Um, and I think really that's, that's the case. It goes back to how we were raised, uh, how we were taught, um, um, what we see in the media of, of being empathetic, of uh, caring for others. I, I think that's, that's, that's the reason why, why we care, um, yeah. even though it doesn't affect us. If, if, if I may interject, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a journalist, so I, I hang around the circle of you know, activists, journalists, so on and so forth, people who have been monitoring Thailand for for many years, uh, two decades, and um, one, one of the things that we notice about this current movement is that it's missing something, right? Mm -hmm. We have the middle class out there, we have the lower class out there, we have Bangkokians, we have the, uh, the province, we have men, we have women, we have LGBTQ, we have just about everyone, except missing are the faces of the privileged class, mm -hmm. the upper class. Now, Rosie, um, you're there, and your uh, Rosie is part of the Choose Change outfit, right? Uh, yeah. You and Ang Ang, everybody should know Ang Ang by now, uh, and Polly, who wrote for us uh, a couple of days ago yeah. about um, twenty five thousand baht Gucci, Gucci shoes. shoes. <laughs> Do they actually wear that to school? For sure. For sure. For sure. And for sure. Okay. Hermes, whatever that bad name is, yeah. Hermes, 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 whatever. Yeah. It's a great god. He's a great god. But anyway, my question here is okay. But you, Polly, and Ang, and uh, and a few others are very few and far in between. Mm -hmm. What does it 
takes to get the others to come out. Because again, again, you know, the movement can push forward so much more uh -huh. if we have more people, especially sure. people with the wealth capital, mm -hmm. the political capital behind them. How to get them out of their eggshell. I think since we started Choose Change and I'm writing that article, that first article, that international article, that international school article that she wrote, people took it in a very different way. But definitely I've noticed is that there's a lot of international school kids who definitely came out that I've acknowledged, like writing about, you know, you know, you can't, I forgot what she said. I think she said about how you li you're living in a bubble of social class and like the goose she choose and that you have this education. The fact that, the fact that you, um, the fact that what we noticed is that Thailand is creating more private schools mm -hmm. and instead of fixing the public education system just shows how, how bad and flawed the system is. And I think for people to get out of the shell, it depends on who they are. Like that article that Angang wrote, my brother took it very offensively. Oh, you didn't like that? I, I didn't like the okay. phrasing. Okay, I just, yeah. I, I'm just people, checking. Oh, we can talk about it. No, 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 let, let, some, some, finish. some people take it as like, oh, you attack me, I'm gonna stay in my bubble. So, and some people take it out. Yeah, this is actually what I've noticed, and then we'll step out. And so far, like not to toot my own horn, <laughs> I think Choose Change has done a very great job in terms of letting people come out and speak more. But I think there's that still one step instead of in terms of actually enacting change, because there's some people who acknowledge that this is actually happening. But there's that parental structure that's like. Oh, but you can't post about it, even though you know it's wrong, because you know I may mm -hmm. I might be affected by it. I mean my family business might be affected by it. But I appreciate the fact that they actually think mm -hmm. wake woke up that you know the government what they're doing to the protester, you know, by instead of the answer that they actually acknowledge the fact. But it's just that one step in terms of posting and like having conversations and a dinner dinner table no, conversations. It's, it's very difficult what, what the trigger will be, but I mean when we did that first video, you know, I I, I Yeah, I, we did know, a video together um, yeah. in front of Parliament House. I, I did bother to take a look at the comments and the comments in general were very supportive. Mm -hmm. So like I was trying to say, I think there was is a strong undercurrent of right. strong support for the Kanat Raza Dawn, but they have a lot to lose. Right. And their fear. And, and their fear. The fear. We're talking about the upper class. They uh -huh. they, they, they support it, to lose. but they just don't want to lose what yeah. they have uh -huh. because is that fear rational or is it a bit paranoia? But before you answer that, let me. I want to get to win because I can sense. <laughs> I can send a look. He wants to say something. Um, but let me preface that by saying, you know, with Angan with an article, you know, I'm I'm a teacher. I teach Tamasan. I've been written, I've been writing for a long time, and I always say to my students, when you write something and publish it. If at least, if not at least 100 people get pissed off, then you're not saying anything. Okay. So it's normal to piss people off. Mm. But the important is create that conversation. Mm. Some people might get pissed off, some people might get enlightened, but create a conversation. However, you were first, at first, pissed off. I, I, well, what I, happened? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't pissed off, but I was thinking stra strategically. Uh -huh. um, if you're going to use that word like... Um, what was what was her title? Something elitist. Elitist should privilege, privilege, privilege should give a crap or, or something. Shame. Okay. Young, rich, shame. young, rich, and ignorant. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I understand that's um, why I'm that as as a journalist and as you know as a marketer or whatever, you need to try to write headlines that will attract people. But if you want to really create change, I think you should perhaps. Uh, change the word, uh, rephrase the word. I actually have someone, I won't mention this person's name, but I've actually a couple of friends post stuff on social media and, 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 and I'm quoting this this as well. Um, uh, she's like, a he, whatever this person is. Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, said, 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 said <laughs> this, said this. Um, if you don't see that this is, un uh, uh, if you don't see that this is uh, disgusting, then fuck you. If you're gonna say something like that, you're gonna detract a lot of people. You're not gonna bring them to your side because if you understand the Socratic method, it's trying to understand the other people and try to bring them aside. So if if, if it was me, I wasn't pissed off. I was just confused. You know, it was it was just thinking strategically and logically. Uh, if you're gonna blame without criticizing, without any any you know, uh, what 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 do, you, what do you call that? Positive. Uh, constructive no, no, no. criticism. Per constructive 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 criticism. criticism. If you're not going to cri criticize them constructively, you're never going to bring them over. Now, now, I, now, I know deep down inside your sister, let, let the kids have that show for a little bit. <laughs> deep down inside your sister might disagree with you. Let me 
ask you a question with this context, uh -huh. okay? Your brother made a good point to be so strongly criticizing, so on and so forth. It, you might the content have, is have, correct. I uh, agree 100% yeah. of the content. The, the word that you use, but, but isn't, 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 and, and we'll get Ang Ang on this show, so we'll <laughs> it's just quite busy. Um, isn't there an argument that um, we have been so nice and compromising and speaking softly for so long, uh -huh. we haven't gotten anywhere? Yes. Right? Yes. The Kanaras are gone out there in the streets, they are not being that nice. They are gar rao, they are aggressive. I was there. They are. Mm -hmm. Does it take that passion mm -hmm. to actually trigger something rather than just keep being nice and really doesn't get anyone anywhere? We just sit there and smile at each other. I, I think definitely, like, I, I agree with this point to an extent mm -hmm. on where he brought up his, I don't know, friend, he or she, what he, she said, or he or she said. <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, I think it, it has a line between, you know, I think reading Ang Ang's article and like uh, literally listening to both sides, I understand both perspectives of where they're coming from. That like, okay, I do care, or I do actually care, you know, I, 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 I got an cow, you know, yeah, yeah, true enough, but then I don't think if any, if Ang Ang did not spark that conversation, international school students would be into this point today. Ah, Ang Ang, not have a cow yeah, of course there's gonna be people so the headline, and, the and, headline. and being uh, like um, you know felt cornered and all, uh -huh. but you know it started conversations that you know sparked like the different groups of like privileged classes. Like you know I go back maybe lie, like, okay fine, I, I don't care. But then this other group is like okay I actually should start caring. And there's this other group that like I do care and I don't I know I care. There's different types of groups, but overall we start conversations oh. that this is a thing that's happening. And past month, um, I've no I've noticed like people are posting about their positions as a privileged um, class society. So I think there should be a line drawn in terms of what words you use. But my personal take with that article that Anna wrote, I don't think it's nothing that offensive because she's making facts. Distraction. Let's distraction. Yeah. Well, well, one, well, Anna will come on this show. <laughs> she's very to talk about that. But let's get back to the last point that you made. Okay, about the the privileged people, whether young or not so young. A lot of them sympathize with the cause, but they are afraid to step out because they are afraid to lose something. So let's talk about what is it that they would lose according to the demands that have been made by Kadar Rasadon. Okay, first of all, Prayut get out. If Prayut resign, if there's no such a, a person as General Prayut Janmosha as Prime Minister, what would the privileged people lose? One. Two, amending con the constitution. Namely, getting rid of the power of the 250 senators, which is not a democratic power. What then would the privileged people lose? Three, reform the monarchy institution. Ah, but to reform the monarchy institution is simply to reform certain laws, mm -hmm. to put the institution under the constitution back into, into the system of democratic constitutional monarchy. Because before, again, 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 what? would the privileged people lose? What can you lose from that? Doesn't everyone gain? The status quo. Simple as that. The status quo. I mean, you, you have to bear in mind that the people that uh, may be sitting out on this, these type of protests have been through in the past 14, 15 years, you know, the reds, the yellows, and they don't see any difference at all right. as well. So they, they don't see any difference at all as well why these kids can actually make a change. So it's sad to say, but they may well be just have have to be basically uh, would happy with happy with the, the, the situation right now. They don't think it could get any worse than this. Do, do you think it would help if they actually go out and see the protests and listen to the speeches as you guys have done? I mean, you, you your eyes were open because you went to the mm -hmm. protest, right? My, my eyes open as well. I wish you were you were neutral before. Exactly. But now you're not even neutral. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I wish that could be the case, uh -huh. right? But you can't force people out there, right? I think. Fair enough. I think. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, talk, oh, talk sorry, about I, I think. I think one one of the ways to uh -huh. try to bring the other side, the let's say quote unquote the world is back. I think we should be able to. Um, whatever points they bring in and, and say, I think we should able, be able to argue and give them facts, such as sometimes I, 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 can, I can recall um, a conversation with, with a fellow person on, on, on Facebook with my, with dad, with my dad actually, it was, it was something like, um, uh, what, what corruption, you know, what, uh, 
why why are we why why is there this inequality? The reason there's this inequality is because is because of individual choice. The reason why there's this inequality is because the poor people are not making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a conversation that we should really talk about. Yeah. Is it really them making the wrong decisions or is it because uh, of the system? Perhaps both. What, what percentage is the cause of, of this inequality? I think this is a conversation that we should definitely talk about. I think it's a conversation that you should also bring in specialists, sociologists, economists, psychologists to talk about these things so that we can end this problem uh, once and for all and just destroy these talking points, which really, really triggers me, actually. You, you, you owe me an article also. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Yeah, there, there, there are some questions. There are some questions. Let, let, let my boss, Chun, read out some questions. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I have two questions. Let's start with the first one from Arthur here. Uh, Thai children, why can't they ask questions in school? Okay, I can take that one. <laughs> really good question. Why can't they... Um, questions in anything? I think they... I feel like maybe that was like the whole emphasis of like reform in education system, but it also happens in private schools too, I've noticed. I think they can't ask because they don't know the answer to sometimes. Um, I know my few friends when we wrote an essay on Thai class, in Thai class, say the keep hop here. I asked the teacher. Sufficient economy. Sufficient economy from our previous king. I asked the, um, my teacher, Thai teacher, what what is so I mean I I don't know what I said exactly it was a long time ago but I was like tell my don't process to keep up here tell my don't can call the human time not make him why if why do we have to write about it if I don't see the good in it and then she couldn't give me an answer back of why she's like oh it's based on the course curriculum and all that so I feel like they can't ask most they can't ask questions because it's either very censored or they don't know the answer to why uh they don't they don't know the answer to the question of the students too and it all stems from the whole media censorship and all the and this, and this is an international school yes not even a, not even no, a, it was in high class school. i asked my teacher why do you have to be pro sufficient economy instead of letting kids think critically of the pros and cons instead of writing why is it good? Because it's just too difficult for the teacher. Yeah, the teachers don't know the answer to why it's, you know, why you can't do write a con about it. And, you know, there's a lot of cases where one Y crew or uh, um, set up when my international school I was in for students to sing the, the, the Thai anthem system. I, 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 Thai anthem, Thai anthem song. I was also baffled in terms of Thai Okay. We're Thai, but there's no... Yeah, why, why, what's wrong with that? And we were Thai, why, what's wrong yeah, with singing yeah, that anthem? Yeah. <laughs> teachers aren't, aren't trained to, 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 to face the why. Why, yeah, why, 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 why. That's the And problem. it makes students even more confused in terms of what is my standpoint? Why, why am I still confused of mm -hmm. things that they don't have the question think, answers to? I think it, it really also honestly uh, stems back to, to how our education system works. If you if you look at the statistics according to macrotrends.net, um, we spend 19.13% per, on education. Like part of our GDP is 19.32. That's a lot. And that's just like behind, th th that's just insane. You know, and, 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 and we've been doing that for a lot of, a lot couple of years and you know the, the statistics have been changing uh, I, think, I think I think we increased two percent from last year so it was around 19 to 20 21 to 22 percent and we've seen the results you know um, kids here are not taught to think critically kids are not here to are not taught to question why so it's, it's not a matter matter of how much budget we put into education it's how much or what we spend you know the quality of it mm -hmm. so you know on, on, obviously on we all hear quantity is not always quality. But then, but then the question is, kids are thinking critically. Things kids are questioning. That's why they are they outside. have been out there outside. Yeah. So yeah. what happened? What changed? Well, what happened? <laughs> what happened? What 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 happened is you know to share maybe my my uh, education. I was you know I grew up in the U.S. You know I I I, I love the king. I follow his projects or whatever. Right. Roma 9 or Roma 10. Yeah, um, or should we even go there? Yeah, we shouldn't even go there. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was probably looking at that particular silo at that time until I went to college. Fortunately, I went to a college that concentrated on Southeast Asian studies. So, just imagine the libraries in the U.S. where you can find any type of book you want, objectively written by someone who has no vested interest in our system, right? Now, 
that particular library is in everybody's hand, correct? I'm supposed to say that. Yeah. Globalization. Right? Globalization. Technology. Yeah. So, so the kids aren't subjected to the textbooks that are written by the government uh, printers mm -hmm. only right now, right? So, they're looking at this and they're questioning, you know, why, why, why is it different from what uh, is being taught in the history books? There's correct? unlimited knowledge in our hands. This is this is a commodity. The knowledge is commodity. It's, 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 it's definitely globalization and the access of free, to free knowledge is definitely why kids are questioning. But uh, if we were to allocate that resource to, um, what do you call it? Um, I, uh, uh, not really, really open-minded teachers. That is going to slow down the effect of kids coming up, propping up, and mm -hmm. questioning. Whereas if we eradicate that, eradicate that, the, 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 that those types, those teachers, and allocate better spending on on, on particular uh, sub, uh, uh, sorts subjects on the education system, uh, we can definitely see more. The change will gradually increase at a quicker pace. I, I believe. Another question? Yeah. One more question here um, from Desmond, no last name. What would what will you tell the parents of other Thai families who may or may not be royalists to agree with their children's protests? Maybe Kun Sukit can answer first. I think it's very important to nurture um, the, the children. If you already have uh, the mindset that you know critical thinking skills are important you know you try to look beyond that that what you need in the future beyond this particular protest alone is that you need to develop their thinking skills uh, uh, for them to not compete within Thailand itself but the rest of the world mm -hmm. you know critical thinking skills are probably uh, an anathema to to the current government system right people like rope learning okay one on so guy okay everyone loves that right um, but, but for me to say that, what, what I want to say is that critical thinking skills is a vaccination for stupid actions. You know, that's what I want to, to, to promote to the parents. Critical thinking skills is a vaccination for stupid actions. Why I say that is that if you watch Thai Rod every single day, you know, you should be quite per sorry, I should not say that. <laughs> Thai Rod is good media. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm you talk about the tabloid section. Oh, okay. I'm always perplexed at the the crime, the murder that happens every single day. And then within twenty four hours they, they, they get arrested. So, you know, that's probably, you know, maybe uh, a result of the current role learning system. Because short if thinking. you sort short sighted thinking where you kill somebody and the next day you get arrested. So if you actually had critical thinking skills, you might not actually be doing that, right? And then then that newspaper or, or, or TV channel might not have if, much if, content to, to offer. If, if I may interject, uh, something struck me. The, the word royal and royalist have been used mm -hmm. in this show and also everywhere else. but. Uh, Help me with this. Let's explore this word. I'm, I'm actually uncomfortable with this word because when you brand one side royalist, does that mean the other side is anti-royal? No. <laughs> Are you anti-royal? No. I don't Are you? No. Anyone anti-royal? No. Right. I think that's that's also very interesting. I think when you brand us as elitists, on the other side also anti-elitists. So I think this is yeah, also. I think they are. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, brand branding can be quite problematic. But but within each subsegment of the elitist or anti elitist or royal, there's always a subsegment, right? Right. So within the royalist segment, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are deep down supportive of us as well, mm -hmm. right? For sure. It's only the fervent and, and, I, and hardcore that we actually see all the time. Are you talking but about the, the, but the ones that are, are, are supportive are unfortunately quite quite silence. Yeah, so so that's the perspective from, from the parent. What about the kids? If your parents didn't agree with you going to the protest, how would you convince them? Um, I don't think, okay. Um, if my, for example, if my parents weren't that support, if, for example, my extended family is pretty blue, you can say. <laughs> and it, when they're live, pretty yellow. They're pretty yellow. They're yeah, pro-government. They're pro-government they're pro -government for sure. And if I were, and I, since I lived there, I lived with them for a while, I would definitely, I would always have arguments with them. <laughs> and I don't think, 
if they were, if I was in that situation in that family structure again, I would still definitely uh, go try crazy. go crazy because no matter I tell them of what is flawed and what Give is right facts, or wrong facts, statistics. they will still be in their shell because they've been brainwashed for the past. And I they, think yeah. sorry, I think what Chod is asking is <laughs> what what Chod is asking is that okay, if your father wasn't so liberal uh -huh. and you want to go to the protest. Would you go without informing your father? Because a lot of kids I have met at the protest, sure. that's what they do. Uh -huh. You would. I wouldn't. You I, wouldn't. I, I don't know if they were like the traditional, very traditionalist. I don't think I would inform. I would definitely go, but maybe not post it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> same, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we have an open relationship. Yeah. You know, we right. share everything. As much as possible. I'm sure they have their secrets. Right? Yeah, that would lead to my next question. Sorry, this question is also for me. It's like you guys have like super open conversation. You would disagree. You would like be very loud uh -huh. among each other. Mm -hmm. But then you would still be able to sit at the dinner table and uh -huh. you know still be a family. So do you think not being able to debate or have a conversation is one of the problems that you know have put Thailand in the position it is today? Yes. One thousand percent, hundred percent. Please elaborate. Can I give you a simple analogy? Hopefully, you will be able to understand. Yeah. Uh, in the past, you know, if you notice, Thailand was full of telephone booths, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Very, very dirty. And it's very smelly. dirty and smelling. Telephone booths. Right. That was that. only five, six years ago. Right. At the same time, four G, three G was coming out at the same time. So the analogy is that. You know what I want to share is that there's conversations that we're happy to use this phone on, right? But there's conversations that we have to run into the public telephone booth to 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 gossip, right? To to, to mention about. If if you have the, these two different realms, you know, within society, nothing will get done because whatever so whatever problem there is, the relevant stakeholders are not all there. The relevant stakeholder that should be there, we can't talk about. So that's that's a huge problem. I mean, as, as as far as I observe, this family obviously you guys talk to each other, and obviously you you guys disagree, yeah. and are not and are not afraid to disagree, yeah. which is very in contrast to a typical traditional family in which you are not supposed to talk back at all, mm -hmm. or to question it's at all. Tiring. So there's a lack of communication. Nobody speaking, nobody listening. There's only order and command and expectation mm -hmm. yeah. to worship yeah, sure. and follow. That's and easy. Is that, that's easy. That's easy. But is that what we are seeing right now in Thailand? The protesters protest, make their demands. Everybody is familiar with our prime minister and every speech that he made. Obviously, he's like the father that doesn't listen mm -hmm. and doesn't hear. Is is it? I mean, do do you see this? Anyone can can. Uh, uh, can pitch on this. Do you see this? This problem we have in on a national political scale is very much the same problem that a, t a typical family might have. Or am I just asking my own question? We're 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 probably just a microcosm of uh -huh. of uh, of society as a whole, right? We just happen to be maybe a little bit more open and liberal to to different ideas. Um, maybe that may well be because of my privilege of being able to go overseas and seeing uh, how other cultures deal with these Conflict. type of conflicts. But right. just just because we've been overseas doesn't mean we know any better. Correct. Well, that's than the average Thai person, class, right? Yes. Correct. <laughs> correct. That's correct. <laughs> so it, it might be individual as well. It's individual right. as well because because you know. I, I, your peers and your peers uh, and my peers, obviously, almost all of them have been overseas, yeah. studying overseas. Mm -hmm. And as you have a test, as you can attest, as I can attest, mm -hmm. a lot of people I know do not support the democracy movement. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we don't have that answer to the question you want. You, you want. Well, that's why perhaps we are stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but, we'll, we'll go back and think about it. It's a really good question. But well, are, are, are there anything else, Chun? That's one of our royalists. Should I ask? Um, let me see. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this one.
Okay. It's okay. The question is why? Why do the so-called royalists do not support monarchy reform? Let me answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's because right now this answer directly linked to what we were discussing before. The problem is miscommunication. People don't listen. People don't hear. So when the protesters ask for reforming the institution, meaning the laws, the constitution in regard to how uh, the institution uh, spend tax money or endorse military, uh, sorry, endorse coup d'etat, so on and so forth. These are legal measures that can actually be changed to put everything in the democratic framework. That's the demand. However, for a lot of Thai people of the older generation, which I also belong to, when we hear the word monarchy, we become panicked. We become paranoid. We think of something else. We hear the word overthrow instead of reform. Mm -hmm. It's emotional. Mm -hmm. It's not rational. It's emotional. And it's emotional because this is our cultural identity, the attachment, the emotional tie that we have had for the past decades, since before I was born, since mm -hmm. before you were born. But it's different with you guys mm -hmm. because you were born in the past 20 years mm -hmm. under a different context. Under, under a different era, right? Because mm -hmm. when, 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 when people talk about how they love the king, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, do you feel identified with that? The current or the past? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't feel identified. I don't feel any attachment. Do you feel any attachment? Which one, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. No, that's, no, that's, that's fair Basically enough. Basically, I mean, not that's attached fair. as our parents' generation. That's fair enough. And that's sadly, sadly, I would have answered the same thing. Depends on which one. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> sadly, uh, that, uh, that's fair enough. But attach or not, love or not, there is nothing wrong with yeah. it. It's a personal nothing choice wrong. for everybody. Yeah, emotions uh, are emotions are emotions. Yeah. There's Queen Elizabeth. I mean, emotions are emotions, but when it comes to national politics and mm. the future of a nation, perhaps less emotion mm. and more reason. Right. And if, if uh, you don't mind if I ask you this question as well, what about the word the, the word elitist? What what does it what does your audience what does that go into their minds? The word elitist. The word elitist refer to the people of the upper class who intend to preserve their status as the upper class and who are willing to step on the people of the lower class to stay there mm. and also who are very arrogant and mm. uppity about their elitist status mm. that, they are, that they look down on the lower class people mm. expecting the rest of us to always bowing and kowtowing mm. when talking to them okay. car while they can talk to us like we are crying present that's elitism in the context of Thailand Okay, so I, because my apologies, because I, I, when when you say elitist, my my opinion, my my, I thought that it was the, just someone who earns a lot, of, has a lot of wealth, but then it, it also goes into the attitude as well, right? It's someone who has a lot of money, but is also down to earth, grounded, um, acts like the normal ninety nine percent. Would you allow, consider that an allow, elitist? Allow me to be a teacher for one moment. Mm -hmm. My two, sure, sure, of my two that inter, <laughs> right? Sometimes when you hear word like elitist or anything else. You define it in the Western context. Mm -hmm. So when you hear what elitist, you think of economic class, mm -hmm. right? Because you think American, you think England. Mm -hmm. But Thailand is a different context. There's an entire history and cultural baggage mm -hmm. into defining what is an elitist. So that is that context, right? Mm -hmm. And again, it's all about education. We all learn, we all grow, right? Yeah. And 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 basically you go to the protest more, you read more about Thailand, you study further about Thai society and Thai history, and then you come you will come to understand what these words mean in the Thai context. Mm -hmm. Never ever they define these words in the Western context. Two different things. Mm -hmm. Two different things. I have last question. Last question. From Kunbo, actually. Alright, my co-host. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think it's challenging for liberal kids to survive in a rather conservative society? How do you prepare to cope with a society with values that may not align with what you have built at home? I don't have any kids, so... Good question. That's very hard to answer. Good question. <laughs> Most likely these kids will probably be educated and then eventually probably live overseas. <laughs> Hope not. Hope not, you know. But, you know, if you don't create room 
for this these type of kids, you're losing a generation of brains that could actually propel uh, yeah. Thailand to to the next level. For sure. I mean, sadly, every day when you see when you buy when you use Grab, you use Gojek, you see you, you see Food Panda, then obviously these companies see the value in Thailand, the economy in Thailand. But does anyone know? Is are any of these companies Thai at all? No, probably not. No. Yeah. They're they're being grown from Singapore, which we normally define as autocratic, right? You would think that autocratic societies would have rote learning, blah blah blah. But if you look at these kids, they had a Singapore-based education. They were taught critical thinking skills. That's not an Im impediment to 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 uh, to uh, domination you know, or or control by the government. But actually, it's something that you can propel the economy forward with when you are able to think critically. Think outside the box. Think outside the box. We don't have a single startup that is competitive right now. Maybe we're off, off topic right the now. The COVID <laughs> yeah. talks now. That's what it is. It's, 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 approach, point two. it's approaching 8 p.m. and I should draw close to this show um, and maybe it'll help answer the Kumpo is perhaps it's just, you know, how to be liberal in a sea of conservatives, right? Yeah, I think you yes. need to fight speech with speech. Don't think that, you know, it is what it is. I think a lot of, a lot of my friends are still, are, are starting to become uh, like tired of it, but I think the answer is to fight speech with speech and in terms of not listen, observe and talk and bring it up in a, in a very casual conversation instead of thinking politics is a, you know, dirty a crime, game. a crime, dirty. a dirty game, instead of just think, um, just let the liberals talk to the conservatives and bringing it up very eloquently as possible, <laughs> no matter how pissed you might be and trying to, you know, listen to them, they listen to you and find the middle ground of and what we agree and disagree. Agree on and work towards that with fight, fighting speech. I think, I think if we're allowed for all stakeholders to say what they want to say, Thailand will be in a much better, better place than now. And one important word, courage. That's what the protesters out there have been showing. Absolutely. That's what the leaders and others who have been arrested have been showing, even though they are still in prison. Uh, we wrote about Rumpa Nasya earlier today about her condition in prison and she's still flashing the three finger salute mm -hmm. and saying long sorry, saying debt to feudalism and long live the people. Courage is where we can find the future to be the lone voice of sanity in an insane asylum, basically. I just want to make a, a, an additional add is that what we see now, you know, if it didn't happen today, it would have happened in 20 years. So the situation now is inevitable. So you either deal with it now or in 20 years. But I think right now, the uh, the, the debate is on the table, so you might as well try to fix it as much as possible. So these children have the opportunity to do what they are, are, are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's end with that. And thank you very much for joining us. This is a different format. We'll keep changing. Uh, once again, Kunbo will be back when we analyze current event issues. And also we'll be talking and interviewing other people, whether ordinary people, um, activists, perhaps other journalists, politicians, if they ever want to talk to us. And thank you for joining us this evening. Sawadee